Okay, hey friends, today we are learning about units. Okay, exciting, exciting stuff here, units. What are units? Well, units are going to be something that we will use to measure some kind of physical quantity, right? And a physical quantity, we're gonna use units and be able to assign some kind of number. to define a specific physical phenomenon. Okay, as an example, uh, let's say we travel back in time 20,000 years and visit our friend uh, Og. Now Og here is at night, he's sitting by his little campfire and it's giving off a lot of light, it's nice and bright. Uh, Og then looks up into the sky and notices a beautiful crescent moon, which is also, you know, pretty bright. And he thinks to himself, wow, they're both bright. Which one is brighter, the campfire or the moon? And Og is able to answer this question. He can eyeball it. He can look at the fire. He can look at the moon and he can see... Uh, the fire looks brighter to me, right? It's shining more light in my eye, it looks brighter. And so he can do that. But if Og wanted to ask, how many times brighter is the fire than the moon? Well, now Og is stuck. There's no easy way to say if the fire is twice as bright or 10 times as bright. In order to answer this question, Og would have to invent a unit. And if Genius Og invents this unit, he might be able to answer this question. Units are going to be some kind of standard reference for some kind of quantity, right? So if we are to now look at a way to create a unit or a standard for brightness, we might have the idea to use maybe a candle some kind of standard candle where we all agree of the material and size and shape that the candle will be made of. And if we do that, then every time we use this candle, the flame should have the same brightness. And once you have that, you can now compare brightness. You can look at the fire and look at the candle and you can maybe have uh, 50 candles and see, oh, the 50 candles is the same brightness as the fire. So the fire must be equal to 50 candles worth of brightness, right? And you compare it to the moon and you see, oh, 10 candles equals the brightness of the moon. So the moon is 10 candles worth of brightness. And so once you have this, you have a way to compare the fire and the moon and say, well, the moon must be one-fifth the brightness of, of the fire, or whatever it turns out to be. So we have created some kind of standard reference, a unit. And we've done this for hundreds of years, for thousands of years. We've created many, many different types of units. But today, we use SI units. We use this in science, we use this in physics, and most countries throughout the world will also use this in industry and in commerce. This is the gold standard for units that we've achieved. This SI units stand for the International System of Units. But you'll notice we don't call them IS units, we call them SI units. And the reason why is because we actually get that from the French name, right? The Système International d'Unité. But we're just going to call them SI units for short, and that should be a lot easier. All right, let's look at a few examples of SI units. We're going to look at what we call base units. Uh, the most important types of quantities that we want to measure turn out to be things like length, mass, and time, okay? Now, there are different units we can use for this, but for the SI units, we've decided to use meters to measure length, sometimes uh, using the symbol M. Uh, mass is measured in kilograms. 
The symbol for that is a kg, and time is measured in seconds. The symbol is s. Okay, so these three units right here are sort of the heart of the international system of units. And uh, historically, they were used before the SI unit system was all developed, and this was called the M. KS system of units, and that stands for meters, kilograms, and seconds. There were competitors to MKS. One of them was FPS, right? This stands for foot, pound, second. You can create an entire unit system out of feet, pounds, and seconds. And some places use this for a while, but it's since dropped out of popularity and it's essentially lost to uh, SI. Uh, there was another version called CGS, where this stood for centimeter, gram, and second. So everybody loves seconds. Seconds are a nice universal standard, but the CGS system uh, found some use in smaller things, right? Centimeters and grams are smaller than meters and kilograms. And so for more of the micro world, this might be more useful. Or maybe uh, when talking about electromagnetic electromagnet type stuff, uh, CGS was popular back then. But both of these systems have sort of lost out, and now we use SI. So MKS was the heart of the SI uh, units, um, but it wasn't quite enough by itself. As people were investigating more um, electricity and magnetism, they discovered they needed another quantity, another fundamental quantity to describe things like charge. And so we created a unit for uh, electric current, right? The flow of charges. And this was called the ampere. And its symbol is the capital letter a. And so combined with MKS, we created the MKSA system in sort of the combination with uh, amps. And that was good for a while, but then we extended it with three more units, and this rounded things out and gave us the uh, international system of units. So the next type of unit we have is for uh, temperature. And we also have another unit for the amount of substance. And one more for luminous intensity. Okay, so this rounds out sort of the, uh, the international system of units here. For temperature, we use degrees in Kelvin. The symbol is a capital K. K. The amount of substance is measured in moles, and this word mole comes from the word molecule, right? So it's usually used when we're talking about how many molecules or atoms or things like that. And the symbol is actually M-O-L. And luminous intensity is going to be measured in candela, where the symbol is C-D. And this is coming from this idea of a standard candle, right? This standard luminous intensity unit. Put all together, this gives us the seven SI base units. And it's an incredible achievement that we've been able to do this. All of these units are defined now in terms of something uh, more fundamental in nature that we can find and measure. So instead of having a manufactured standard candle that we light in order to measure brightness, we define the candela using sort of the way specific wavelength of light and, and how it's moving out of a source. And uh, we define other things like uh, meters in terms of uh, the speed of light, which is a universal uh, standard. No matter where you are in the universe, you'll be able to measure the, stand, uh, the speed of light, and from there, you can measure the size of a meter. Um, the same thing with mass and, and time. Time is measured by having a, a kind of a specific type of atom, and the energy levels oscillate between uh, two different levels in that an, uh, atom. They oscillate, you know, 
many, 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 many times per second. So once you measure how me a certain number of those vibrations, you can calculate the length of a second. So it's a, it's a monumental achievement that we've been able to uh, put together, this system of fundamental base units. Um, but not without controversy. There are some people that don't quite like the way we do it. Uh, for example, some people might claim that uh, moles and candela don't quite deserve the honor, the true honor, of being a base SI unit. Uh, they might some, say something like uh, moles are not a true unit. Maybe they're just a scaling factor or that candela depend on human biology, which is not a fundamental quality of the universe. So there's some interesting arguments there. There's, there's some controversy, but uh, the powers that be have defined these as the seven base units. And so that's what we will be using. What we're sort of doing here is putting together something called the metric system. Now, the metric system is composed of a few pieces. The first one we had were the SI base units. Okay, so we covered that. That's good. We got that. But we need a little bit more. Those seven units don't define a lot of things that we see in everyday life. And so we need SI derived units to talk about those. And we're also going to need the SI prefixes to really round out this whole metric system. Let's talk about uh, these derived units real quick. So when we talk about derived units, we're talking about things like, for example, volume, right? So if we imagine a cube, how would we talk about the unit that we use to measure this volume? Well, we could imagine each length is length L, and each of those lengths is going to be measured in meters. And so you're going to measure uh, this is, let's say, one meter times one meter will give you area, times another meter will give you volume. And so volume we see is measured in cubic meters, right? This is the unit of measure, a derived unit that we'll use to describe volume. So it's not just meters, it's cubic meters or meters cubed, right? A new unit. Uh, another example might be um, density, right? So density takes this idea of volume and extends it further because it says that uh, if we have some chunk of material, it'll have volume, but it also has some mass inside there. So we're looking at how much mass we have per unit volume. And the units for this is going to be something like kilograms per cubic meter. And so this unit of density is now a new derived unit that is created from base units. And uh, let's just try one last example real quick, something like speed, right? So in speed, you have an object and after some amount of time, it's moved to a new position. So what we want to find here is how much distance it's traveled and how much divided by how much time it took to travel there. So this gives us units of meters per second. And sometimes we can give new names for these derived units. So units like uh, watts or units like uh, joules, right? These are derived units that represent ideas of power or energy. But if you were to break them apart, you would discover that inside of them, you have the base units. You have kilograms, meters, and seconds, things like that. And so this gives us the idea of a derived unit. And using the base units, we can create a whole plethora of derived units that we can then use to describe almost every single physical quantity in the entire universe. So it's extremely powerful. All right, so this is what we're talking about here with derived units. And finally, let's talk real fast about these SI prefixes. Now, when we talk about prefixes, we're going to discover that they occur 
usually in powers of 10 or a thousand okay so let me now sketch out a bunch of different prefixes that we can talk about okay so what we have here now is a system of prefixes that we can use to add on to uh, before the units in order to describe uh, bigger and smaller versions of that same unit. And it helps us scale the unit to many different sizes so that we can talk about the size of the universe and the size of the atom all using um, the base unit of a meter plus a prefix, right? So it allows us to skip writing a lot of, a lot of place value numbers. Uh, we have uh, here a uh, deca, hecto, kilo, mega, and giga for larger and larger quantities. And you can see they occur sort of in powers of 10. So right, 10 meters would be a decameter, a hectometer would be 100 meters, and a kilometer would be 1,000 meters. Once we get to uh, the 10 to the 3, then the next prefixes come every other thousand, right? Every other 10 to the three. So mega would be a million meters and a gigameter would be a billion meters. And you get the same thing going smaller. And it keeps going. So 10 to the 12, uh, 10 to the 15, 10 to the 18, uh, and 10 to the, 10 to the minus 12, 10 to the minus 15, and so on and so on. Also have other names and prefixes associated with them. Let's try an example just to see how this works. Uh, let's say we have two kilometers okay how would we rewrite this in terms of meters right the base unit here right so we have the base unit in the middle well two kilometers that's going to be equivalent to we know that kilo is 10 to the 3 right so a kilometer is going to be 10 to the 3 meters that's going to be two times 10 to the 3 meters and we could write this if we wanted to as 2,000 meters there you go okay these are all equivalent uh, likewise if we wanted to have something small let's say six nanometers okay something very small here well uh, nano is equal to 10 to the minus 9 right so this is going to be equal to six times 10 to the minus 9 meters and if we wanted to we could write this as 0 0.1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 Nine, okay, 0. Oh, whatever, six meters. Obviously, this is not a convenient way to write things, and so that's why we choose to use either scientific notation or to use a prefix like nano, and it allows us to write things very concisely for this kind of scale length. Um, and let's just try one more here to show a common pitfall. Let's say we have two square kilometers okay so we're measuring the area maybe you bought a piece of land it's two square kilometers how would we transform this into square meters right which is maybe more of a base unit type of thing get rid of that prefix well uh, we know that uh, kilo is ten thousand, right so two times ten to the three square meters and that should be it but We've made a small mistake here, and this is actually incorrect, okay? So you might think this is the best way to do it, but it's a trap. Why is it a trap? It's because a kilometer is, in fact, 10 to the 3 meters. But that's one kilometer, and you've got kilometers squared, and so you actually need to square this quantity. And when you do that, we will find this is 2 times 10 to the 6 square meters and now we have the correct answer in square meters so just be cautious when converting things around with prefixes um, but we'll go over more of that in the next lesson where we talk more about converting units so that pretty much does it here we talked about uh, si prefixes and how they're used to scale a unit to a bigger or smaller size uh, in lieu of maybe writing out lots of zeros or using scientific notation we can use these prefixes and they're easier to say as well a kilometer a nanometer a micrometer it's easier to say
We talked about the base units here and how these seven base units form the foundation of all other units that can be derived from them to create new units, talking about power or, or energy, things like that. And uh, that's going to be our lesson today for the SI units. So thanks for sticking around with me.